guys, Delaney here. While I'd love to say that every lambing is beautiful and smooth and easy, it's not. It can sometimes be your worst nightmare, especially if you are a new shepherd and have never experienced lambing before. We will go over what a beautiful, perfect chef's kiss lambing looks like, but today we are going to go over everything that could possibly go wrong and what we can do to help prepare for some of those rough labors. Three out of the seven lambings I would put under the bad category, simply because we had to step in and mom needed a little help. Two out of the three were nightmare scenarios for me and ended up with a dead lamb. It's hard to say you had a successful lambing when you end up with a dead animal. The first, the first lambing season, I went into it thinking as long as we didn't have a lamb whose head was stuck and dangling out, then I'd be okay. Then guess what? First lamb out, that's what happened. I didn't know when to start doing barn checks, so I wasn't being as vigilant as I should have been. Luckily, my husband was home and we were able to corral the mom into a corner and help get the baby out. It twitched a little bit, but didn't really take a breath and didn't really wake up. Huge crush to your confidence when the first ever lambing you have ends up with a dead lamb. The next two labors following that one did fine. They came out perfect. I didn't need to intervene. But the fourth one of that year, the baby was stuck again. We didn't really understand feed at the time and we overfed our animals so the babies ended up a lot bigger and because a majority of them were first timers they only had one lamb inside and so that lamb, that one lamb got all the nutrition and all the food and ended up being a lot bigger than they were supposed to be. That's a big reason why they got stuck. I took a picture of some really weird liquid discoloration coming from the U and my friend luckily called me immediately and said that that is marconium and that is the lamb kind of pooping inside the womb because it's stressed and she said you need to go in and get that baby out and so of course I was like oh okay so grabbed the infant in his car seat and my two-year-old ran out to the barn and went in and tried to get the lamb out fortunately that lamb was presenting correctly with the nose and the feet out but it was stuck it was too big and so it was quite a bit of a pull. I was by myself. I prayed and was crying because I just didn't know if I could get that baby out. Luckily we did. She came out and everything was fine. She's perfectly happy. She's actually due this year. And so that was a better case scenario than the first one that got stuck. But the next season it started with our absolute worst lambing experience. Again, I went into it thinking that the worst case scenario for me, because we dealt with the head sticking out before, this time the worst case scenario would be tangled lambs that I would not be able to untangle and get out. And lo and behold, <laughs> that's what happened. Labor started at 9 p.m. I saw three water bags come out and drop and had a feeling something was wrong. I had to look it up and it's supposed to be a water bag, a baby, a water bag, a baby, etc. And instead I was seeing three water bags and no babies. And I, I had this gut feeling that things were wrong. I cut, it was night, so I called my husband out to help. He helped hold while I went in multiple times to try to figure out what was going on inside. We were able to get a leg out and then I was trying to find the other leg and I pulled a second leg out and after a few hours of working and trying to get that to happen, we found that there was two legs and they were both different sizes. And my immediate thought was to freak out and go, oh my gosh, this is not the same lamb. I am trying to pull out two different lambs at the same time. So I let go of the legs. One of them was still sticking out, but the other one kind of retreated back in. We called everybody we could possibly think of. We called everybody we could possibly think of. We called multiple different vets. We called a few different friends. Most of the emergency contacts you find at vets are for cats and dogs and, and house kind of pets. They don't really do large animals. And so we were kind of just calling everybody we could possibly think of. We had a friend we called who was doesn't live anywhere near us, but I was like, oh, maybe you can help me walk through what I'm supposed to do. Um, we finally got a hold of a friend who was nearby who could come out and help. 
she came, she was raised on a goat dairy, so she had way more experience than I did, and even she was like, it's so tangled up, I don't know what's going on. Finally, we got a vet to kind of call us and try to help us walk through it, but we just couldn't figure it out. And she said, well, if you get to my clinic, then I can help you. Well, the clinic was about 45 minutes away, so we had to take the mom with the little lamb's leg sticking out, get her in the back of the car after she'd been laboring and really struggling for a few hours into the back of the car. My husband had to stay to watch the kids. My friend stayed in the back of the car to make sure that the sheep was not moving and didn't stress out too much. Just in the back of our van because we don't have a farm car. And I was in the front of the car and we drove 45 minutes away to see if we could save any of these animals. It was roughly 2 a.m. in the morning and so it was by the grace of God that this one vet was willing to come out and to help us. The vet came out of the clinic and met us in the back of my car and put her hand up the sheep to figure out what was going on. She basically said that the lamb's arm was bent all the way down. One hand was out, one was all the way bent here, and that the head was actually bent down and backwards under the ewe's hip. So the one that was stuck was a ewe lamb. So the ewe lamb was plugging the hole, and there was other lambs trying to get out behind her. And we got to the point where the vet said I might have to... Ugh, break the little lamb that's plugging the hole because I can't untangle her and and get her out in pieces which I just was like I would not be able to do that so thank you God that we were able to find a vet to do this because I'm not I'm not touching that <laughs> I'm not doing that um fortunately we didn't have to do that the, the vet was able to untangle her and get her out she was not alive she may not have ever been alive it could be that that's why she got so tangled up and stuck she looked a little bit smaller than the two ram lambs that came out after her so it could be that she either died ahead of time or she was just smaller and that's why she got tangled up we're not sure but when she came out she didn't make it and wasn't alive and the two boys came out and the vet grabbed her and grabbed them and kind of shook them and dried them off and they were able to kind of bounce back. In the end, it ended up being a complete nightmare night that turned into a miracle because as we were driving to this vet, I asked my friend, what's the likelihood that the babies, that there will be any babies alive? And my friend was like, you need to start praying because it's very likely that no one's going to make it. And in the end, we ended up with a live ewe and two ram lambs, which was the, really the best case scenario for us, was that the mom survived and we ended up with one or two lambs, even if we lost one. Now, there are way worse scenarios on farms than what I've been through. I've heard some crazy stuff. Lambs that were deformed with two heads, with multiple legs. I had a friend who had a ewe who had dead lambs inside her, but who didn't go through the process of aborting them, so they were dead inside her and decomposing. The lambs started to decompose inside the ewe. I mean, there are some wild stories out there. Most of the time, these these kind of scenarios are really rare and you're not likely to have them on your farm but stuck lambs and lambs that are kind of twisted up and, and have a hard time getting out those are fairly common and like i said before i believe most of our issues stemmed from overfeeding and also a you who really didn't have the right genetics and just wasn't really made to have lots of babies and babies that were a little bit bigger. She ate a lot so she ended up having larger babies and that didn't help when her cervix was really small. When the bad situations happen you really just need to survive them as best you can but there are some preparations you can make ahead of time to make those kind of emergency situations a little bit easier. First make some connections with some vets in your area and collect their information. See if they do emergency on-farm visits or can call in an emergency and help you walk through what you're supposed to do. And that they specifically do larger animals and bonus points if they have experience with sheep. If we didn't have those two vets that we have, our kind of regular vet in the emergency one we ended up calling that night, and they didn't, and they didn't have experience with sheep or larger animals, 
then I don't know what we would have done. God sent us to the right person who was sweet and willing to help us in our panic and our lack of skill, but we were blessed. Not everybody has that. So I would really look in and do some research on what vets you have available that do large animals. And don't be afraid to extend the radius of what you're willing to travel by a little bit more. I recommend collecting as many vet contact numbers as you can get. Some areas will have a lot, some areas will have barely any. We wouldn't normally go an hour out of our way to visit a vet, but without the one that we found, we could have lost the ewe and all of her lambs. Be a little bit more flexible and open to looking further out than you initially planned. Another thing you can do ahead of time is to make friends. <laughs> Make shepherding friends. You can find them on Facebook groups. You can connect with them on Instagram. I'm sure there's a bunch of different social media platforms that you can try. Discords maybe that you can join. I am a part of one group that is specifically sheep. And then I have another Facebook group that is specifically dairy sheep and homesteading. And then another that is homesteading in the Middle Tennessee area. All of those are people that I could contact and ask for help and try to make connections to have that support when the emergencies come. And it's really easy to get connected with them. You just start by asking questions. There really aren't that many shepherds out there and even less dairy shepherds. So when you find one and you really connect with them, we like to, we like to stick together because there's just not very many of us out there. Getting a mentor or a more experienced farmer who all have unique experiences can give you a lot of knowledge going into lambing. Bonus points if they are close to you and are in relatively the same climate and topography, the same kind of land that you have, because that they're gold, you need them. In order to keep all that contact information together, we have created an emergency contacts template in our You and Me library. All you need to do is sign up for our newsletter, link in the description box below, and you can get all of our worksheets and templates, including the emergency contact template. It has spaces for the vet clinic name, the specific vet's name if you are in contact with that particular vet, the address in case you need to throw a sheep in your van and go to the clinic. And I also have similar spaces for friends and family contacts. And these are all specifically for sheep and lambing emergencies. I have a few other prep tips that help just mentally prepare for lambing. They aren't the best in an immediate situation, but they do help when you're struggling to comprehend something or need a visual or just another person's perspective or some more feedback on a decision you need to make. You can actually search through your Facebook groups for questions that someone may already ask. You can ask your own questions, but most of the time someone's already asked them. Probably by me because I am notorious on those groups for asking a million different questions. <laughs> because I really started out knowing nothing, so I was asking everything I could possibly think of. Of course, there's always Google too. I find Google not always helpful. There aren't a ton of sheep-specific information, and when you do find them, sometimes the layout isn't great and it's really hard to nitpick the information that you're looking for. But there are some gems out there where you can get some really good help. Also, don't knock other farmers in your areas, even if they don't do sheep, if they do goats, or other ruminants, try to make some of those connections as well. If you have time, sheep's books can be really helpful. Researching ahead of time what can go wrong and what to do will help you in the moment not be so freaked out and you might be able to reference it later in an emergency. Another thing is to have an emergency plan. Now this is a little bit different than just having the contact information. This would be more Okay, if X happens, then I do Y. If B happens, then I do X. We have gone through two lambing seasons, so going into three, I kind of have a rough idea of what an emergency plan for me looks like, but it's gonna be different for every single person. Writing down what kind of scenarios you could possibly have on the farm and kind of going, well, here, if this happens, we're gonna do all of these things and having them written down and to be able to look at them and kind of sort them out in your head. If you can't sort them out in your head, putting it on paper, 
then I would really recommend kind of having that sort of hard copy of an emergency plan. Another place that I would recommend if you haven't heard of her already is Sandy Brock from Sheepishly Me. She's a fellow YouTuber. She's been YouTubing for years. She always goes through every single lambing season that she has and shows you what her experiences are, what she's dealt with. She is mostly focused on meat sheep, but she has hundreds of sheep that she deals with and dozens and dozens of lambs do every few months. I usually watch a variety of her different lambing series in order to mentally prep for lambing season. I usually will start watching it a few weeks before lambing just to go, okay, what is it I remember I have to do? Okay, okay, yep, yep, I remember that. Oh, oh, that's something new I didn't think about. It's just really good to review some of the stuff that another farmer is dealing with. So you go, oh yeah, yeah, okay, this is how we did it. When we had that lamb with the head that was coming out and she was stuck, I had recently watched something similar happen to Sandy on her YouTube channel and I was able to go, oh, yeah, I remember that. Okay, it didn't freak me out as much because I'd seen it. Even though it wasn't in person, I'd seen it and I wasn't as freaked out. And I was like, oh, how did she do this? Okay, and she, she pushed on the stomach a little bit to kind of help with the, the contractions. And I was like, okay, okay. So watching her videos really helped me kind of not be as freaked out but also go, okay, I saw her do this, I can do this, here's what she did. And be able to get through that first ever lambing that we had that ended up being that stuck with the head out lamb. She has seen and done it all or nearly everything and watching an expert at work is very impressive and extremely educational. So I highly recommend seeking out her as well as any other shepherds that go through these kind of lambing experiences and kind of pick up some of that knowledge that they're sharing because it will really help you in the long run. I hope all of this information helps you understand what can go wrong during lambing and how to prep for it. Keep in mind, a majority of lambings go really well. We've had seven labors on the farm, only three that needed assistance. We've had 12 lambs and only two that didn't make it through lambing. Live births are more common than death. It's just really hard not to focus on the bad ones and we get really worked up over those situations. It'll be okay, just breathe. You can do this. I had no experience whatsoever and we've survived each one, learning a ton along the way. If you have any questions that I didn't cover, put them in the comments below. I'm gathering questions to answer in a live video at the end of our lambing season. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up subscribe and hit that notification bell to be notified the next time we release a video. Thanks for watching. Again, it'll be okay. Just breathe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.